massive problem in the UK. There's not enough tradespeople, whether you're a tiler, plasterer, chippy, sparky. Kids aren't naturally thinking about, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a, a bricky. Yeah, you know, there's mucky. And there's not a lot of mucky in the vans going on. Not enough people willing to get their hands mucky. If it's not addressed now, it's going to be a massive problem. So we've got to just give them that option. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is a reality. And see if we can get some kids interested. Young people want to be now, they want to be famous, don't they? Yeah, YouTube stars, yeah, they do want to be footballers. But yeah, that's going to have a massive impact on industries like the building trade. One person every 77 seconds. Yeah. Bloody hell. We was the workhouse of the world. We're definitely not now, are we? Definitely not. How do you say a bicester? You say Bister, I say Vicester. What's the right way of saying it? Is it Bister? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's Bister. We're in Bister. Between Bister and Aylesbury, yeah. <laughs> How many houses are you putting in? 52 on this side. 52, OK. That's so, it. different sizes. Three bedrooms, four bedrooms, semis, terraces detached. Some social, some affordable rent. Um, right. Quite a mixed scheme. But you're saying that's very modern? It's real construction underneath all this cladding. There's traditional metalwork, traditional tile hanging, traditional timber work. You know what you're it. doing, don't you? Oh, we're at it, yeah. We're you really know doing what you're doing. doing. Yeah. It looks a pattern, doesn't it? Can we have yeah. a look inside? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Look, how are you getting on with tradesmen, then? Tradesmen is a real tricky thing in this country because, they, you know, the world's changed in what people want to do. You know, my son's doing computer design. I said, well, wouldn't you like to be a chippy? No. <laughs> so, and then look at me, you know, give me a blank stare. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, like you was talking you know, nonsense. You know, I was talking nonsense. And actually, if you say to someone, maybe a youngster, well, you can go and work in a bank, and it's nice and warm and you can wear a suit, or actually, you can go and spend your day in the rain and minus two degrees and put a roof yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You know, suddenly it doesn't look quite so interesting. In my trade, it's a bit the same, you know. You can't get any young lads. You, you can't get any apprentices. So the lads that's in it are earning more money, which is great. <laughs> that was my boss on the phone. I'm to work Sunday morning, double time. I said, she'll do for me. You've got to go beyond just having the trainees. What you've got to do is try and actually get those kids enthused and, and onto site. And what we're doing on this side, we're working with VIY. So I've got a group of you. VIY. Oh, yeah, volunteer it yourself. We basically travel up and down the country, teaching kids trade skills, painting and decorating, carpentry, plumbing, tiling, bricklaying. If you put them in an environment where they never thought they'd be, and then they suddenly realise, hang on, I'm kind of good at this. Um, and then when they realise that they can actually earn a good wage out of it as well, it's great to show them what it's all about. Give them a bit of a taste of, of what it's like and trying to, trying to get a few people into the industry, which is, which is great, which is great. Well, what am I going to get stuck in with? We're going to send you around a bit of block laying first, because that's a very traditional skill. So you make a bit of a sausage on the board, Scoop that on the deck or on top of your block you just laid, make your bed. This is a fair bit of working out, really. You measure how long your run's going to be, divide it up by the length of your bricks, plus 10 mil for each um, gobo joint. You don't call it gobo, you call it, you call it mud. No, muck. Perp, perps. That's your muck, where you put your muck in for perps. Yeah, and then work, and work it out, and if there's going to be joints, you make, those, make sure those are in the corner. Level and plum, they're, they're the key things to get, really. It's coming on, mate. It's coming on. It's only, she's, not, she's not for the real world, though. She's only, she's only practice. Is this all? What are you going to do? Knock her down? <laughs> it won't take a lot of knocking down, will it? <laughs> Why are you here, then? So, just to get more qualifications and yeah. learn, just learn everything I can possibly. Okay. You got any idea what you ought to do? Um, I want to go into education and teaching and stuff. Ah, right, okay. So, okay. yeah, hopefully do that. I've always believed, like, the more skills you know, the better. Thought it looks half square. Yeah, it looks better than it was before. Yeah, fair play. She just, yeah, more qualifications are better. Yeah, she wants to be, she, she wants to become a teacher. So that's the sort of plan then. Going into education, and if it's not taking your fancy, we oh, just put her on from the outside, mate. Uh, yes, please. If it's not taking your fancy, go bricklaying. Yeah, so basically, see... it's my plan B. And she works in a pub yeah. called uh, Bricklayer's Arms. Four nights a week, yeah. <laughs> bricklayer's Arms, yeah. Yeah, it's quite appropriate. She says, yeah, yeah, good lass.
if you would say to a group of girls, oh, do you want to come in a day on a construction site and learn bricklaying? They would all say no, but if they actually came and experienced today, they would realise it's actually quite fun and it's hands-on. This was a practice, yes, this was a practice. Then we went up on the, on the top of the building. It's good to, you know, to be laying bricks in what eventually will be a house. All right, well, we'll get cracking, eh? Yeah. That's fun. So we need to get some map. How do you get on this job, boy? Well, I just the idea sort of came up at the uh, local youth cafe in Aylesbury. I normally attend youth concern, either to see friends or to look for jobs and stuff. Uh, I got approached by a member there, and he uh, he said to me, you know, we just had a hit up from this project that we've heard about, and uh, they're coming down here looking for volunteers. Would you be interested? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm going to turn an opportunity like that down. So yeah, it's quite cool. I didn't do so well in school. I've got uh, Asperger's and uh, also ADHD, so um, my my options aren't so great at the moment. Right. Delivery is the only job I can really secure at the moment. Right, OK. It doesn't really pay the bills, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's more yeah, sort yeah. of something you want to do on the side of another job. So, so what's the goal, then? End up, you, want, you want to be a bricklayer? So I've got an application going out for the army at the moment Are as you? well. Even if I didn't make it into the army, I'd be happy as Larry doing this. You would? Yeah. It's something that you can enjoy and you get OK money for it as well. Yeah, yeah but the same way where there's, mo there's money, don't there? Well, yeah. Of course, having a trade's important. You've got to, you've got to have a trade. I think so. Oh, I've always been fascinated by the plastering job, you know, because I've always, I've always known that it was a bit of a knack. I've been plastering for over 30 years. My father had a, had a, had a plastering business and I sort of drifted into it more than anything else. Pretty aimless teenager, so yeah, that seemed to be the easy option. But actually, it's given me a good career. It would be great to try and give something back to the youngsters, try and encourage some youngsters to come in, even if they're not considering it. Kevin knew to get the right consistency. There's no numbers to work to. We just need it. He's been doing it long enough. He knows the right sort of gloopiness it needs to be. We just had a kid, a baby. Sh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The bit you might struggle with is getting it off the hawk yeah. onto the wall, OK? The hawk is the thing that you hold the, the muck on. You kind of what you mustn't do is try and push it off straight. It will end up on the floor. OK, you've got to do that, OK? Just chucks it at the wall, but then chucks it at the wall in such a, a measured way that, yeah, one minute, the next thing, the, the, the wall's plastered. So it is literally probably five mil. It sort of makes it look dead easy. That was magic to watch. You got a bit too much on there. You've done that before, haven't you? <laughs> Sorry, mate. If I'd have dropped it all on the floor, didn't I? I'm not going to start applying for plasterers' jobs, mate. Come on, come on. <laughs> Chuck a load on to start with. Um, get it somewhere near. Leave it about. 15 and 20 minutes. Can you see that? Yeah. It's not soft, soft, so then that's ready for the second coat. Put a bit more on, not as much. Get it semi-level, um, another 15 or 20 minutes, and then go for the final run. You're taking tips off me, dropping it on the floor, mate. That's what's been happening there, eh? So what's the, what's the plan, then? So you're going to college? Uh, yeah, we're going to uh, college. I went for the last two years. Have you? Yeah. How old are you? Uh, 18, 10. Are you? Oh, yeah. so you, you left school and went straight to college? Yeah. Hey, Max is a good lad. Max is a good lad. You can tell this is what he wants to do. He's, you know, he's, tr he's trying all different sorts of trade. That's what he's doing. That's his passion. He wants to be um, a tradesman. What do you want to do? What, do you want to get into plumbing? Is that...? Uh, yeah, that, that was my uh, theory at first, but I don't mind like, bricklaying and like that, but I, like, I, I, I want a job that you know, I keep active with and that. Yes. He dropped less than me. <laughs> so now we're, we're troweling up. Troweling up. Troweling up. It was nearly therapeutic, just watching him the way he just moved the, the mud over the trowel. Just, you know, they wasn't thinking about it. They weren't trying to show off. They were just, that's just what they do. You can tell, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what he does. That's what he does, yeah. I, I think a lot more sites should do things like this, even if it's just one day a year, bring some kids into, you know, close a section off like we've done and let them have a go, get stuck in. Knack in there. There's a knack to it. You've all done well, considering you've never done it before. All right, yeah. <laughs> in the space of a year, I might only get 10 kids out of 1,000 that might actually go on and get an apprenticeship or might be doing some painting and decorating of themselves. Some of the kids I've spoken to said, yeah, no, I want to open my own business. That's 10 people that wouldn't have done it. And that those 10 people then could have their own children and their own brothers and sisters that they said, you know, you can come and work for me. 
Yeah, so it could spiral out of control. You never know. Those 10 could turn into 100. So, yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, unlike uh, a course in credit, you're going to get more experience from actually uh, working on the triad. We've all had a really good, yeah, really good experience of it. It's been great fun. Yeah, my boyfriend's already asked me if I'm going to build him a man cave in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> What a great thing to be doing, to be trying to grab young folks' interest. I think it's bloody, it's bloody great. I don't mind being a plasterer.